Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to our new summertime hours of Stimnola's Thursday live sessions. My name is Chantel Bolden, and I will gladly be your host for today. Uh, we have a very exciting day for you today on the topic of buoyancy and density, one of my favorite topics, and I am so excited to teach you two experiments that we're going to do. Before we get started, we have a very special guest, Mr. Z Smith from Boeing, and he's going to talk to you guys about buoyancy and density and all the fun things that go into his professional career. Mr. Z. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, here, let's go. Great, okay. Um, hi, um, so uh, I just wanna, int I'll introduce myself a little bit and then uh, set up the conversation for the fun part of all the experiments coming and try to connect buoyancy and density to things that matter uh, to people in uh, New Orleans and Louisiana and really around the world. Uh, just to introduce myself, I grew up in the farm fields of uh, Michigan and Illinois uh, I studied physics at MIT, uh, electrical engineering and computer science uh, at Princeton, and I have a master's degree in architecture from University of California at Berkeley. Today I work in New Orleans at SQ Dumas Ripple. We're a roughly 50 person architecture firm. Um, and some of our other, my fellow uh, colleagues here from EDR, um, uh, Will Netter here and Ryland Auburn uh, have presented at other sessions in uh, for STEM NOLA. So I wanna talk about density and buoyancy. So just to go over what's density. Density is kind of how much you have in a given amount of volume. And so if we think about this, just to, to kind of illustrate the spectrum, imagine I had a cube, it's one foot tall, one foot wide, one foot deep. And that cube could be of air, of styrofoam, of wood, of water, of concrete, of steel, or of gold. Well, how much would that cubic foot weigh? Well. If it's air, it's less than a tenth of a pound. Styrofoam, three pounds, easy to pick up and toss around. Wood, 26 pounds. If you're in good shape, you can do it. Water, that cubic foot is 64 pounds. Concrete, 146 pounds. Steel, 490 pounds. And gold, 1,206 pounds. Well, that's each of these was a cubic foot. And what we mean by density is we just say for that cubic foot, here's the weight. And, and here's the amount of volume. So that's the same thing as that wood is 26 pounds per cubic foot or water is 64 pounds per cubic foot. That's the typical way that we talk about density is the mass or here on earth, the weight divided by the volume. So easy to remember things, if I have a solid chunk of something, if its density is less than water, then it'll float. So, you know, styrofoam at three pounds per cubic foot it's a lot lower density than water. So yeah, it'll float. In fact, it mostly floats above water. On the other hand, wood um, is 26 pounds per cubic foot. It's about half the density of water. So a log you'll see floating in the water will typically be about half submerged. Um, an iceberg, right? Um, ice is just a little bit less dense than water. Like It's a little like 10% less dense than water. So that's the source of that whole idea that an iceberg, you only see the 10% the above the water that's floating, that there's this huge thing lurking below the below water. Now in school, we uh, were often talked about this famous Greek guy, Archimedes, um, who used density in a really interesting way. Uh, he worked for this king and the king said, my goldsmith, I gave him this big chunk of gold to make my, fam my fancy crown, but I'm wondering whether he really used all the gold to make my crown. I know how much my crown weighs, it weighs the same amount, but I'm wondering if what he did was he mixed some like maybe a quarter of that with some silver that's a lot cheaper um, and kept, the, kept that gold for himself. I wanna know, did he, did he, did he uh, cheat me or not? And so Archimedes goes, well, simple, let's melt down that, that crown and we'll measure how much its volume is. We know its density and we know what the density of gold is. And the, and the king goes, no, but I like my crown. It's really beautiful. So can't you find a way to test what, how much volume is in there, what the density of this crown is uh, without destroying it? And so Archimedes, now I didn't know what to do, didn't want what to do, decided I need to think clearly. Maybe I'll take a bath. So he's lowering himself down into the bath and he notices the water rises up as he lowers himself into the bath. And that's when he said, he spoke in Greek because he was Archimedes. He said, Eureka. And all Eureka means is I've found it. I found the answer. And the answer is that the amount of volume, no matter what, how crazy the shape of Archimedes or the crown um, uh, will uh, be found by the volume of water that's displaced, meaning pushed out. So if you take a big cup of water and you fill it up right to the brim, 
And then you take some oddly shaped thing, in this case, a little tiny pear, and you push it down in the water. The volume of that pear is exactly the quantity of water that spills out the brim. And you can measure the volume of water in that that fell into that tray, or you can measure the weight of the water and just weigh it. Either way, because we know that the density of water is 64 pounds per cubic feet, you can measure the weight or you can measure the volume. Either way, you can tell exactly how much water came out and therefore what the volume uh, was of that object. So wait a second, you said that things that were less dense than water float, but we know that steel is a lot more dense than water. So why don't, why don't boats sink? Well, the answer is boats aren't solid steel. If a boat was uh, filled with steel, um, it would sink like a rock. Instead, boat has a steel shell and then a lot of air. And so you need the, uh, the total weight and the total volume gives you a density. Um, and the air is, weighs a lot less than water, is a lot less dense than water. So the combination of the air and steel makes something that is less dense. And the neat trick is if you wanna know um, uh, how high or low the boat will flow in, in the water, it's that the, if you take the volume of the water, the weight of the water that, that gets displaced as you put the boat in the water, that's identically equal to how much that, that boat weighs. So how does that apply to life today? Well, here in Louisiana, uh, we live a lot on the water and there are all these great houseboats that are often towed into the, we build them on land, we uh, put them in the water and we tow them to where we'd like to go, live in the bio, do some great fishing. And these can get pretty fancy, they can be two stories, you can have a deck, all kinds of things. Um, in the Netherlands, which is a whole country where half the whole country is below sea level, um, everyone loves living on the water, but of course they're, they're on the ocean, and so tides go up and down. So what they've done is they've developed a form of housing that there's these uh, piers going down into the mud uh, below the water, and then the whole boat goes up and down with the tide as, as the tide comes in and out. But we have another thing of concern with climate change. We're all concerned about bigger and bigger storms. And so during those storms, most of the time, it's gonna be completely dry, but occasionally there might be flooding events. So rather than the flooding coming in and doing damage to our house or having to make our house be up high in the air most of the time when we don't wanna live high up in the air most of the time, what if we could make our houses, they could be kind of amphibious, right? A, a frog is an amphibian. It spends part of his life in the water, part of his life on the land. What if our houses could be amphibious? And so uh, there's a whole project being done for whole kinds of different countries, uh, different parts of America and around the world to make houses that can float, that can be amphibious. Uh, led by this project called the Buoyant Foundation Project that Elizabeth English uh, drives. But we've already built some examples of these buildings. So here in New Orleans, there's this uh, building called the, the Float House. It's built uh, in, uh, as part of the Make It Right Foundation, where this is a bunch of college kids, and they got together and they get these big honking chunks of styrofoam, and they drill out, they put all the power lines and the sewer lines and the water lines into that styrofoam, and then they spray on some thin, super thin concrete around it. And now you've got this floating object that's like incredibly strong. They put it on the back of a truck. They did this at, they were in Los Angeles. They drove it across the country. Here they are driving it right past the Superdome. They crane it into place and they build the house right on top. And so now you have a house that can float, but during normal times, it just looks like, it can look like any other house just sitting right on the ground. So these are the ideas of how buoyancy and density show up in our lives in lots of different ways. So with that introduction, over to the fun stuff. Let's, let's do a lab. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ms. Misfit, for that animated explanation of buoyancy and density. It was thoroughly enjoyable. I can't wait myself to experience those theories when I go for a fun pontoon boat ride this summer, so I'm really looking forward to it. Alrighty, so guys, we're going to get into our hands-on activities for today, and your facilitator will be one of my favorite new interns for the summer, Ms. Kyla Parker, who's a junior at LSU. Ms. Kyla. I am your facilitator today. My name is Kyler Parker. Like she said, I go to Louisiana State University. My major is kinesiology, um, concentration in pre-dental, and I'm excited to do the experiment with you today. So I'm going to read the agenda and then we're going to get started. First, we're going to do vocabulary terms. Then we're going to go over the objectives, then the activity questions, and then we're going to do the edible boat. And following that, we'll do the floating egg. 
after that, you can ask any questions and I'll be happy to answer them for you. All right, so the first vocabulary term is density. Density is how close together the molecules of a substance are or how much mass a substance has in a given space. Buoyancy is the upward force that a fluid exerts on an object less dense than itself. Water displacement occurs when an object is largely emerged in a fluid, pushing it up out of the way and taking its place. Archimedes principle states that the weight of an object submerged in a fluid is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So an example of water displacement is getting in the bathtub. So when you get in the bathtub, you don't fill it up all the way to the top because you know you have to leave a little room for when you get in, the water rises. And that also relates to Archimedes principle. Um, buoyancy, we see buoyancy when, like he said earlier, Mr. Smith said earlier, when you go on a boat ride, the reason that the boat floats is because of buoyancy. All right, our first agenda question is, which of these can buoyancy not act on? Concrete, water, or jello? So we'll give you a minute to answer those questions. So which one do you guys think it is? Concrete, water, or jello? All right, good job. The answer is concrete. You guys got it right. Okay, our objectives today. You will understand the meaning of the terms density, buoyancy, water displacement, and Archimedes principle and apply them to the project correctly. You will examine floating eggs and an edible boat. All right, the next question. What are we experimenting with today? Rockets, wind, buoyancy, and density. So you can answer the poll question. I hope you all got it right. Good job, guys, 100% correct. Buoyancy and density. All right, our questions of the day. What is buoyancy? What causes the egg to float in water? And what makes a boat float in water? So you guys can write these questions down and then we'll come back to them after we do the experiments. All right, so let's get started. The first experiment is the edible boat. For this experiment, you will need Nutter Butters or Oreo cookies. I'm gonna use the Oreo cookies. Pretzel stick, blue food coloring, a plastic knife, a plate, and a small mixing container. So while you guys get those materials, I'm gonna read the science behind it, and then we'll get started. The hull is the shell of the boat. The main sail is the larger sail that captures the wind power that is needed to move the sailboat. It attaches to the mast, which is a long vertical pole. This pole is also attached to the boom, a long pole parallel. What makes a boat or ship float? The air that is inside of the ship is much less dense than water. This is what keeps the boat floating. When a ship, in water, when a ship is in water, gravity pushes it downward and the amount of water that is equal to the weight gets displaced. All right, so I hope that was enough time for you to get your materials and now we're gonna get started. So first, I'm gonna clear off my plate and I want everyone to grab your airheads, grab your mystery airheads. So I know you're gonna be eager to eat your edible boat, but you'll get to do that once you're finished. So grab your airheads and open them. What flavor do you think your airhead is? Hopefully mine is blue, blue is my favorite. So open your airheads. After you're done with that, you can place it on the plate and you're gonna open your pretzels. Okay, so make sure that your airhead is out of the package and you're gonna grab one pretzel stick. All right, hopefully you guys got that. All right, so first we're gonna take the pretzel stick 
put it in the middle of the airhead and fold the airhead around the pretzel. Oh, see, my pretzel stick broke. So I'm gonna get another one. It's okay, that's why we have a lot. So gently fold the airhead together around the pretzel and you wanna squeeze the airhead together. The airhead is creating the sail of the boat. Oh, my pretzel broke again. Sorry guys. Three times a charm. Let's hope it work. It works this time. All right, so gently squeeze. These pretzel sticks are very fragile. There we go. All right, so that's your sail. The sail is kind of heavy, but it's okay. All right, so that's step one. This is how it should look. Okay, now for step two. You're gonna open your Oreos. So I want you to look for one Oreo that's whole. Some of them may be broken, but we'll need a whole one first. And then we're gonna take another Oreo. It can be broken, but you also wanna find another whole one. And you're gonna cut it in half. Now, sometimes cutting it in half is kind of hard, but it may work for you. But I'm gonna break mine in half. So I'm gonna open it up, break it in half, just like that. It doesn't have to be even, it doesn't have to be perfect, just break it in half. All right. So this part, oh, I, I forgot to mention that this is the mast of the boat. So this is the sail, the airhead is the sail, the pretzel stick is the mast. All right, so next we're gonna open our icing package. Be very careful. You may have to squeeze it down a little bit because you don't wanna get everything all messy. Let's see. Oh, here we go. There we go. Open it up. So you're gonna squeeze a little bit of icing in between the part of the cookie that you broke in half. So the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna take the mass of the boat and stick it in between these two Oreos to create our boat. All right. So it may take a little patience to get it to stick, but it's okay. I know you guys got this. So squeeze it together. Try not to break the cookie. Oh. And my pretzel broke. It's okay. So I'm gonna backtrack. Open it back up. And get another pretzel in there. So you have to be really, really careful with the pretzel sticks because they're very fragile. I'm gonna stick it right back in and squeeze it together to make my boat. All right, so this is what mine looks like. All right, I'm gonna set the boat down and then we're gonna create our water. Remember we talked about buoyancy so the boat can float in the water. So you're gonna take your container and you're gonna put, you can fill it about halfway with icing. All right. I hope you guys are enjoying this experiment. All right, then after that, open your blue food coloring. Be very careful, you don't want it to stain your clothes. And you can put from two to four drops of food coloring in there, depending on how dark you want your water. So if you want dark, dark water, like the muddy Mississippi, you can put four drops or even five. But if you want light blue water, like 
maybe a beach in Hawaii, you can only put two. So I'm gonna do two because I've been dreaming to go to Hawaii and hopefully I get some pretty light blue water. And you can mix it together really, really good until you don't see any more white. All right. There we go. And then you're gonna smooth it onto the whole cookie until you can't see any more black. If you have to mix more icing, that's okay. You can just add more icing and more food coloring. It's not a problem. I'm gonna try and make a couple waves on mine. All right, so then after that, you're gonna take one more cookie or you can also take the other half of the cookie. I don't know where my other half went though. And then you're gonna break it in half. Again, we need one more half. So once again, take another cookie, break it in half and smash that together. All right, so then we're gonna carefully take our boat, place it in the water, and we're gonna use this half of the cookie to help support our boat so it stands up. So you're gonna turn it on this flat end and we're gonna stick it right there in the icing. So it may take a little, a little patience in a little while to get it to stick, but it's okay. All right, so this is what mine looks like. Mine is a little messy. That's what mine looks like, but I would love to see yours. So when you get a chance, take a picture or a video of yours and you can send it to webinar at simnola.com. We would love to see what you created today. Well, that was fun guys. I hope you really enjoyed that experiment. But now we have one more experiment to show you guys. So you can move all of your materials to the side, clear your area and get ready to do the floating egg experiment. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that experiment. Next is the floating egg. All right, so the materials that you'll need for the floating egg are two eggs, two tall drinking glasses, and salt. And you'll also need water. So fill your two cups up with water. I filled mine up about three fourths of the way. Just like this. So while you get your materials, I'm gonna read the science behind it. Density is the amount of matter that will fit in a given space. Buoyancy relates to the object's ability to sink or float. Because the density of the egg is greater than the density of a regular tap water, the egg will sink to the bottom. However, when you add salt to the water, you then increase the density of the water, which makes its density higher than the density of the egg. Increasing the density of the water by adding salt to the water causes the egg to float or to become more buoyant. All right. Are you guys ready to start? Okay, so hopefully you were able to get your two cups of water, fill them about two thirds of the way, and you're gonna place them in front of you. All right, so next, I'm going to get two eggs out of the carton. Be very careful with your eggs. You don't wanna, you don't wanna crack them. And I'm gonna place them right here. All right. 
I'm also gonna grab my salt and a spoon for the experiment. Okay, so first I'm gonna take one egg and place it in the water, the cup that has just the water. All right, so as you can see, this egg sunk down to the bottom of the cup. So this means that the egg is more dense than the water. All right, so next I'm gonna take three teaspoons of salt. So one, two, three, and we're gonna mix it up. Make sure you mix it really, really good. All right, stir, stir, stir until you don't see any more salt at the bottom. And now I want you guys to make a prediction about what you think will happen when I put the egg in the salt water solution versus the egg in the regular water solution. All right, so once again, make a prediction about what you think will happen to the egg when I put it in the salt water solution. Will it float or will it sink? All right, so let's see. Okay, so my egg sank to the bottom of the cup. So we know that isn't right because the salt is supposed to make the water, the salt is supposed to make the egg less dense than the water. So we're gonna take the egg out. See, this is a great learning experiment, experience. Take the egg out and we're gonna add more salt because the egg is supposed to float in the salt water. So let's add three more teaspoons. One, two, three. And we're gonna mix it really good until the salt dissolves. Really, really, really good. Hopefully it works this time. All right. Take your egg, place it in the water. And there you go. The egg is floating. So the salt water solution made the egg float. There you go. So it depends on the amount of water that you put in the cup. So the three teaspoons was not enough to make the egg float because I had about, my cup's almost all the way full. So if you have a smaller cup, you won't need as much salt, but if you have a bigger cup, you'll need more salt to make the egg float. And that's it for that experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, so back to our questions of the day. What is buoyancy? All right, is buoyancy the downward force on an object that keeps it stuck to the earth? The upward force that acts on an object in the air or the upward force of fluid exerts on an object less dense than itself? I hope you guys can get this one right. All right, put your answers in. Perfect, most of you got it right. Buoyancy is the upward force. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. Buoyancy is the upward force. A fluid exerts on an object less dense than itself. Good job, guys. All right, for our second question, what causes the egg to float in the water? Density makes it sink. Density of the egg is greater than the water or density makes it fly. Let's see what you guys think. Get your answers in. I think you guys got this one. All right, density of the egg is greater than the water. Good job, guys. 
And for our last question of the day, what makes a boat float in water? The water overflows the boat, the air inside the ship is less dense than water, or the object floats in air? So once again, get your answers in. Perfect, the air inside the ship is less dense than water. Good job, guys. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, I hope that now you have a better understanding of buoyancy and density. And remember to email your pictures of your edible boat to webinar at stemnola.com. Thank you guys. All righty, thank you, Tyler, for that awesome presentation. Uh, just a reminder, before you eat your boats, please send us pictures to webinar at stemnola.com. I really wanna see them and what they turned out to be. But before I dismiss you guys today, we have a few announcements that I wanna remind you of. Um, the first one being that if you are local in the city, we have a technology camp right here in our stemnola headquarters where you guys can come and experience five different topics of tech um, led by our awesome interns and our staff here at the office. Scholarships are available. So if you want more info, just visit www.stemnola.com or email us at camps at stemnola.com. And then secondly, if you live in central Louisiana, we have a virtual STEM Saturday next weekend. Registration is currently open for DOD Central Alexandria. Other than that, we will see you guys next Thursday. Thank you so much for logging on with us and you have a great afternoon.